Good morning, ladies, and welcome to our interview with Lolly Ramirez Bennett. You are going to get so much out of this interview, it isn't even funny. So good, so good. Um, Lolly, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. I really appreciate it. Um, if you could take just a moment to introduce yourself to the girls and tell them a little bit about what it is that you do. Absolutely, Christina. So good morning. Uh, my name is Lolly Ramirez Bennett. And I am the national CEO for Women of AT&T. I also am an associate director uh, for AT&T Finance. And I am a results manager, basically running the business with numbers. So um, it, it's without question a STEM career. And i um, very excited about share, you know, sharing with you a little bit about my background and the importance of pursuing your own passions in terms of what you feel is right for you. That's awesome. And when I first heard uh, results manager, um, first I was really impressed, but then also I was kind of like, that's not a job title that I've heard before. Sounds amazing, but can you tell us a little bit about what a results manager does and is responsible for? Absolutely. So results man manager title is really a creative title. It is um, helping a business organization run successfully based on the numbers from the lowest level in terms of our um, rep uh, production and uh, timeliness, uh, customer satisfaction, all the way up to those things that are important to our senior vice presidents in terms of measuring the success of the business. And, you know, it, I kind of fell into this job. So um, I... I, I always tell people, you know, do what you do well and enjoy doing because somehow or another things kind of come out, uh, will, will open up for you in that respect. There really isn't anybody else that does what I do. I use the numbers to, um, to strategize and determine what is the best way we need to move from a business perspective. I help my senior leadership understand where we're at today, what could we do better, is there something that is trending out of the ordinary? Is there something that we need to engage a different part of the business, one of our partners, to help us identify what the heck's going on? Is can we reduce the volumes? Can we um, can we do something smarter? Can we automate? Can we do, use um, robotics to improve some of the parts of the business? And um, it's really about helping drive the results that you want. But it's all with math. Uh, the, the other piece to that that I do a lot, and again, being very, very comfortable with, with math, um, I, I kind of landed in that place where I can help um, my peers and my leaders when they're being approached about spending money within the business. So if you think about your own personal uh, budget, whatever it may be, if, you're, um, if you have $100 and you've got to decide how you're going to do it, well, think about AT&T, where we're looking at spending millions, billions of dollars, right? And so if somebody comes to us and says, you know, we could save you $110 million if you spend $10 million, that seems like an obvious thing, right? Right. Well, it, one would think. But um, at the end of the day, for, for us, usually, in the, at least in the part of the business that I support, we don't have a lot of expenses. Our expenses are predominantly people expenses, so pay, payroll, uh, the building that they work in, et cetera, right? And so if you're going to save me money, it's going to come out of that, that head count. That means I no longer need that many people. So it's very important for, for our organization to be able to understand, you're telling me you're going to save me $110,000. How is it that you're saving that? Right. And... Um, and being very quick and methodical in terms of being able to say, oh, hold on a second, Let's, tell me again, what is the math that you did? And in that particular case, I'll tell you that it was very, um, it was nice that I had a sales background because you have to learn how to, how to be diplomatic and say, you know, you might want to consider redoing the math on that one because I think you might have your decimals a couple of points off. In actuality, they were going to be able to sell, save us $110,000, but were wanting us to spend $10 million, but they just had a decibel in the wrong place. So is it important that you can do math? Yes, 
at the basic, yes, at the mid-level, yes, at the high level, all of it. Math is very important in what we do in business. So now I'm really, I mean, listening to you explain like the scenario of, of what you do and, and how much you've saved the company from spending and everything, it sounds like this position is really, really an important position. So then I find it interesting that um, when you made the comment that you created the position for yourself. So how did that come out? Because I mean, listening to this, it sounds like a no brainer that that would be some, that would be a position at every company. So how'd that come about? It sounds wonderful. Well, Christina, you know, one of the things is that we have to recognize that when it comes to value, it's, it's dependent on who you're selling it to. Right. I, I always, um, I always say that my job is not your typical finance job. It has as much to do about selling the credibility of the work that I do and the trust in what I do as it does numbers. And so years ago, I was very fortunate to come across a, a man who became one of the best mentors I could have ever asked for. And he relied on, on what I offered him. The most important thing I think that built our relationship up front was that um, everybody was very quick to say yes to him. And to some degree, I'm going to say um, a lie, if you will. And I'm, I'm not going to be that person. The very first thing that I usually do is have a discussion with a new leader and say, you know, what you will get from me is the honest truth. We can work around whatever it is you need us to work through, but you're going to get what I feel is important. I do have a tremendous intuition, and um, I can bring that to the table. I also have 20-plus years doing the work that I do today and have honed in that the sense of the numbers. So, you know, it, it's funny because a few years back when they started introducing uh, AI and robotics, everybody thought, well, you know, Lolly, that, that's kind of going to replace your business, right? And it does to some degree. But there's something that you still have that you can continue to build on that I bring that, that the robotics won't bring. I can think just as fast, if not faster. And by the time you have to figure out um, and give the requirements to a robotics team to build something for you. I've got you the answer. So mine is a quick and fast response. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't, you're, you're absolutely right though, Christina. Some people will not see the value in it because you see that you think it's, it's something I can do. It's, it's a, I don't need to pay the expense of having Lolly here. And then somebody else will come around and say, well, hold on a second. I really need this. And, and, and it's just a matter of how you sell yourself. And don't sell yourself short regardless. I mean, I know what I do. I know what I can bring to any business. I can bring it to at and I can bring it to small mom and pops. I can bring it to Walmart for a retailer, or I could bring it to a restaurant business. I could do it for anybody, for school for that matter. So you have to understand your own self-worth and know that it is a transferable skill. If you don't want... If you don't recognize what I bring to the table, it's okay. I got somebody else that will take it. See, and I think that is so important because it, it really is um, a, a major key for success, I think, in no matter what career path um, we're going to take, is that understanding what skill set you have, what you're good at, um, and believing in it and, and being okay with expressing I'm really good at this um, I think that's something that um, I think for a lot of us we struggle with um, but I think the sooner that we can we feel more comfortable in doing that then you are able to open those doors and being okay with you don't recognize my value okay I know I can find people who can so that's oh. amazing yeah I think it's it's um if I had to tell you, probably one of the most important skills or abilities that you need to be successful in anything that you do is self-confidence. Mm -hmm. You have to understand what you bring to the table. And, you know, part of being self-confident is preparing yourself, right? And, and knowing that you've got the necessary education, knowing that you've done your research, knowing what you, knowing that you know the business. But 
self-confidence is, is critical, in my opinion, to anything that you do. Because remember I mentioned how much of what I do is really based on the credibility that I bring to the table. I have to have the self-confidence to know that I stand in front of multiple uh, leaders and say, you know, this is what I think, this is where we're headed. And um, I always have this um, discussion with people about, it's really hard for me to give you an answer as to where we're going to be because I really don't know what the future holds. Well, usually the trends are telling you where we're headed. It may not be the most um, definite answer, but there's a need for forecasting. Right. At, at a personal level, if we, didn't, if we didn't make some sort of planning based on forecasting, we wouldn't decide what school we go to. We wouldn't decide if we're going to live at home or we're going to go off and stay in a dorm. Um, you know, the, the, there's, those, are, those are forecasts that we're making. This is where I want to head in my life. And so I think that, that uh, again, it's being very confident that you, you know enough about the business to know where to, to go next. So um, one of the things that I talk to girls about is the fact that self-confidence, that confidence is a muscle. You work it out um, and everything like that. So you work it out by taking little risks and then you see that, you know, you either did really well at it or you didn't do so good at it and you survived anyways. Um, what are some ways that uh, you can share with the girls as to how to build that self-confidence muscle? I really love that. I think that's a, a perfect way to describe it. Um, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, you have to recognize that we're going to make mistakes. We're human. But we can pick ourselves up. And so when you, you do that exercise of taking the little calculator risk and putting yourself out there, and recognizing that even if it took me a little bit longer than necessary to speak up or it took me a little bit, maybe I made a mistake in what I said or I, I, I stuttered a little bit up front. At the end of the day, no one died. No one. It, it, it was just a minor little effort. <laughs> Most people didn't even recognize it. You know, I always tell people that tell me I'm a perfectionist. And I have to have this perfect and it has to be, you know, I'm a perfectionist too, but it came to a point in my life where I realized nobody else knows the picture that I've drawn for perfection, right? Mm -hmm. And so even if I deliver at 80% of that perfection, people were amazed, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And so you realize, okay, I'm overkilling myself because I don't have to go to that degree. Um, give it a try. Again, the important thing is Life is about trying, failing, picking yourself up, and trying again. It's all about practice. It's all about practice. Absolutely. We've got, I mean, if you look in science, we have some amazing things that have come out of mistakes or failures. I mean, like, look at penicillin. I mean, that was a complete and total, like, accident. So, um, so really, honestly and truly, that, that's the thing that you need to realize, ladies, is that you need to make mistakes um, in order to actually grow and become successful. Um, so what are, or what do you think is maybe the biggest thing that you've struggled with in your career and then how did you handle it? The biggest thing that I've, you know, again, I think it's to some degree, it's a self doubt. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that you go out and you have to do it regardless, right? Um, I may be the only woman on a team of senior leaders. I may be the lowest level, but guess what? They're listening to me. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that as a woman of color, um, as a woman, um, you know, and now it's uh, as an older woman, right? Because the, the, there's all kinds of, 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 of um, uh, I, I'm not going to say stereotypes or, but, Quite honestly, you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Mm. And um, I am who I am. And if I don't embrace myself, how can I expect others to? Exactly. Um, I think that, you know, I learned uh, early on, I started participating 
with diversity organizations. Um, I grew up in a very small town in South Texas, and in in my environment, it was predominantly it was probably at the time maybe 50% white, uh, probably 49.9% Mexican or Hispanic, mm-hmm. and. When I went off to college at UT in Austin, um, I didn't realize that you know they invited me to go to orientation and they sent me off to a group that was for Hispanic students. I had no clue what a Hispanic student was because I was who I was, um, and and so I was quick to to stop and assess and learn. And you know I am very proud of my heritage. I'm not. I, I can't. I can't change that. I have to embrace it. And then having lost my parents at a very young age, it is what ties me back to them. But at the end of the day, the thing that's most important for me in terms of of helping, because I still think that there's a need to, is, is helping be an advocate for women. Mm. I think that as women, you know, you still have today, I, I mentor a lot of students, uh, and adults, and I still hear uh, hear people tell me, well, my parents don't really want me to go off to school because they think I should just, you know, stay home, get married, and have children, find a good husband. I am so grateful that before my mother passed away when I was 20 years old, my mother had instilled in me the fact that if I wanted something in life, the best thing I could do was pursue an education so I could afford it. And I could enjoy life. And, you know, eventually, yes, I got married and I have a wonderful supporting husband. And I'm very grateful for that. But I stand on my own two feet, regardless. Mm -hmm. And I think that although it's not been necessarily a big struggle for me, it's been probably the most defining situation for my life. I bet. You know, I mean, it's just there's so much... I don't know, there's so much there to unpack. I mean, literally the, and it all stems back to, again, that you said it right there. It was like being comfortable in your own skin. Um, in all honesty, the only person that you have to live with is yourself. You know, there's no, there's no avoiding it. And so once you get to know who you are and, and getting comfortable with that, then you can find like, okay, this is who I am. And then I need to be the best version of me that I can be. And, and having that confidence in doing that and then setting those goals and meeting them. Um, I just, I think that that's um, a huge important lesson for girls uh, to hear and to take away from with this is that it really is being comfortable with who you are because there are lots of different layers and lots of, um, ideas from society that are coming at you um, as to who you're supposed to be, um, what box they want you to fit into. And it really is um, finding a way to shut that noise off and be able to go like, this is who I am. And I'm standing, like you said, standing on my own two feet and this is how I'm going to, to travel through life. And that education is, is so important, whether it's, um, College is super important, but that's, um, and I hope I don't irritate parents, but there's, there's lots of different paths for getting to the same goal as well. So you've got to look I at what you're doing. Absolutely. I'm like, there's, there's different types of trainings and certifications and things really looking and seeing, you know, the, where do you want to, where do you want to go? Where do you want to end up in life? And then figuring out how do you get there? Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I like that getting comfortable in your own skin. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Christina, if I may, sure. um, one thing that I would like to share with you. <coughs> For me, you mentioned somebody trying to put you in a box and trying to say this is who you should be. That is probably the biggest motivator for me. Ah. Tell me I need to not, I, I can't be something, um, or tell me that this is where I should be, and I'll show you that I, I have a whole different ability. Um, I always try to encourage people as a whole, even employees, um, about the importance of knowing what triggers you in a positive way, right? Um, And it's been those times when I've told people 
I'm going to do this, and they come back and say, I don't really think you're able to. I, 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 you can't do that. And guess what? I'll show them. There was never a question. And so you learn to you learn to really harness that ability. If you tell me I can't do something, I got to show you. And so um, I encourage you to think about what triggers positive response from you. And and I, I'm going to say sometimes a negative can equal a positive. It's just what you put to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've had situations before where I've had people tell me, college professors tell me that I couldn't do things. Uh -huh. And um, harness that to use that as the, the fuel to the fire of, oh, yes, I can. So, yeah, absolutely. I like that. Finding, finding what it is that's going to bring you more positivity and help fuel that fire to get to where you need to be, making sure that you've got more of it. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to add that I also think the, the other piece to that is even if it is something huge in terms of dealing with it, um, understand that there's other people that are willing to help you and may want that. And by collaborating, you've now monumented, you're, you've multiplied, excuse me, your effort and, and your, your possibility to move forward. So utilize, get whatever reaction it is, take it, assess it, decide how can I, how can I be smarter about this and approach it to where you want to. Because in most cases, you don't have to do things alone, but even a step at a time, you're doing more than many people do. Absolutely. And just with that, I mean, that, that's one of the things too that um, actually in a couple of these other interviews that has been brought up is really taking a look at the people that you're surrounding yourself with uh, and making sure that they are going to be people who are going to um, help lift you up um, and not adding to that negativity um, of, of you trying to reach your goals. That is um, very key. Are they, are they people who are there to help support you? For there is, it doesn't have to be that there's somebody who um, can connect you to somebody. It's just that they're there to help lift your spirits up when you're beating yourself up and that kind of thing. It's just, it really is so important, ladies, um, to really take a good hard look at who is in that inner circle and really um, treasuring that inner circle, who gets to come in and, and who is a little bit farther away because that really um, has, I think, a big impact on your psyche and, and everything. So I was time getting a little... <laughs> no, that's you, but very just, valuable uh, information you're bringing up. Yeah. Um, I would also add that it's important to recognize that it's a circle. Mm -hmm. So that means that where you take what you need, you give back to that. You help contribute to those people. And that as women, we have a responsibility to help each other out. Because by becoming stronger, we can become what used to be the men's club, right? Mm -hmm. No, we are the women. We have the power. And I, I don't look to say I want to be the, you know, the most uh, uh, powerful of folks or, or, or gender, I'm simply saying I ask for equality. And I believe that as women, we have the potential to do. We, we may not be, have the physical strength. I can tell you we have amazing mental, mental strength. Absolutely. We have amazing emotional strength. People think of emotions as being something bad. But again, if you learn to harness that, you can push yourself beyond. And, and those are the things that are important to remember when you think about what you're doing. Remember who you are. Look at the women around you in your life. Look at the women around you in your community. I had a chance on Friday to go and help with a, a food. It was kind of a food bank, but it was a drive through food bank, and we gave other supplies and so forth. And I, I was there helping, and I will... Uh, and I will tell you, we had um, State Representative Christina Morales. We had State Representative Sylvia Garcia. We had um, Congresswoman, uh, not Congresswoman, Senator uh, Carol Alvarado. We had um, Constable Sylvia Trevino. Okay? 
aside from that, the other other amazing women that were there putting this together. And I can't tell you the number of people we serviced that day. But there was phenomenal power. Mm-hmm. It's just that first handful of names I gave you. And they were all women. Yep. They yep. were all women. And and um, it's it's important to recognize I can be just like them. Mm-hmm. Perhaps I can. I'm a little bit older than them, but you know, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I think too one of one of the the things for us to to realize, and I think, ladies, um, it, it's it's hard. Someone else's success does not take away from your opportunity and ability to succeed as well. And I think that is a place where um, we find that uh, when we when we believe that it does, that's what fuels that competition. That I, I can't help you. Because if I help you and you succeed, then that takes away from me. And that, that isn't the case. That we are all helping one another and giving one another up, um, for sure. Um, I do want to go backwards a little bit um, and, and talk about this. I, I know that it's going to be a shifting of the gears. But um, within, uh, for your career, because you mentioned you went to uh, University of Texas in Austin. And I'll, so that brought back to me is like, so to do your, to, to go into your career of what you're doing, um, what kind of education do you need? Like what kind of uh, major did you need? Was there any special certifications or trainings that you needed to take? Um, so that way the girls um, have got a little bit of an idea for that kind of path as well. Okay. So I will tell you, if you came into AT&T today and wanted to go straight into working under finance, you would have to have a bachelor's in either um, accounting or finance or something of that nature. Without question, you really do need a bachelor's of some sort. But that's not to say that's the only way you can get there, right? Um, so I myself actually got hired into AT&T as a bilingual sales rep. I was, uh, I, um, another thing that I do very well is selling. I can, I can assess the situation very well. I can modify it. Uh, my approach, and it's all about the end result for me, right? It's not that I'm going to, um, it's not about just selling, but it's about finding a way to make this something that you need. And so I was very good at sales. I eventually went off to be an account executive for a few years. And then I came in and I was a, um, um, what was considered a coach. I had a team of salespeople. And then I went off to do operations. And all that time, I mean, I did do math. I did do uh, some of that, actually, while I was an account executive. We started working from home. I was in San Antonio for a couple of years, and I was working from home. And I really didn't like working from home at the time because I was single, and I needed the people. And so I made a deal with my boss and said, okay, look, I I can sell. Now, that's That's obvious. But... I really, selling is a little bit of a non-challenge for me. Uh, so maybe what I could do is take over some of your uh, administrative responsibilities and help you some. You don't like coming into the office, so why don't you let me use your office? I'll take care of the team and support them in this respect, as well as I promise you that I will have at least a minimum of, and I think I committed to like 400%, that to, and it wasn't a problem. I, I excelled for the next year. Um, because I was able to do the math, figure out who was in on track, work through that, do all the things, and then do my, my selling. Um, so I slowly learned to put, again, utilize the math that I knew to become really good at that. The other thing is that when I was selling, I was doing math as well because I would do proposals. And I always approached it from the standpoint of, um, I want to offer you what we can. This is during the time when AT&T was 48 cents a minute. So it was 30 years ago. Um, so it was, it was a very competitive time. We just started having other people. But I was still outselling because I approached things directly and, and so forth. So for me, those things laid the foundation into where I'm at today. As I said, I use selling as much as I use my back, background in numbers. I'm very good at, uh, I'm very analytical, so I'm always watching and understanding what's going on. 
and I catch things usually ahead of time. Um, so I think what I, I say all that to say that it doesn't, to your point, Christina, yes, a degree is wonderful. It's a great stepping stone, but it doesn't matter. You can always work your way in the other way as well. Um, the thing is, is you might have to work a little harder. You might have to prove yourself. But um, I've been, I will celebrate 35 years with AT&T this June. Um, I guess it's June already, right? Uh, in, in nine days. <laughs> and, um, and so therefore, I will tell you that, that uh, it, it works. It, you, you can manage it either way. So in, I, what I really want to make sure that uh, the ladies pick up on this is that you, one, like we're gathering the skills and recognize the skills that you have and worked on them, but then also found the opportunities and, and took the risk to present a solution to that, like to take advantage of that opportunity, like going to your boss and saying like, hey, you know, I know you like to work from home. I like to work from the office. And this is what I can do. And being able to prove and show that and creating that opportunity for yourself, that there are those instances when you can do that, ladies, in your careers. Um, and to, you know, again, know what you're good at, you know, build up those skills and everything. Yeah. Um, and to take advantage of that, to look for those opportunities and to take advantage of them. Um, I think that too many times, um, we wait to be presented with opportunities rather than finding the opportunities and taking advantage of them. So You absolutely have to work towards them. You can't sit and wait. It's very rare that somebody's going to come and pluck you out of it. And, and to be honest with you, um, I've had opportunities before they have come and told me, you know, we really want, um, I've had one that, that sticks out in my mind, that they really wanted somebody that was a Latina and they wanted that person for that a position. And I, I didn't take it. It was a promotion, but I wanted to be recognized for what I brought to the table, not because I met, met a box. And every time that I've done that, it's worked out to my advantage because those jobs didn't stay long. Um, and for me, it was about doing things my way. No, I think that's good. That's, and I think that's a good point, too, is that there are going to be times when opportunities are presented to you and if they don't feel right you don't have to feel obligated to take them absolutely um and that that's another really good point as well so thank you for bringing that up that that comes again from that self-confidence right you got to know who you are you got to know who you, what your values are um for me it's about having somebody i i love the most when i work for somebody that is intelligent that I can learn from, that I can respect, that has similar values. And so if I can't get that, guess what? I, I'm, I'm, it's not only about upward mobility. It's about being smart in what you do. And I will tell you that having done the job that I do today for over 20 years and knowing that I can get up every morning and be excited about what I do is pretty amazing, right? The other thing that I didn't mention earlier is that I have a team. My team is not – I have one person here in the U.S., but my, my team is remote. And I have people in the U.S. and international. And I have to hire people internationally without getting to meet them. I have to develop them. I have to be very in tune to what I hear to know how to recognize things. And, you know – Back in the day when I didn't like me working from home for me to date, working from home has been a constant probably for the last 15 years because I do work such uh, with such uh, different groups. And so I need to be available whenever they need me. Um, but I also have a tremendous amount of flexibility because uh, I, I may need to be on a call at 7 in, in the morning or um, not uh, or something at seven at night in the same day, right? Yeah. So if I take an extend, extended lunch and go and get back to, um, you know, doing a, a STEM day at a school or a meeting with my woman of AT&T during the day, it's okay because I know I'm giving and have that leverage uh, to do so in the job that I do today. 
That's awesome. Very cool. Like how you've you've gone from one end of like not liking to work from home and remote to now like that's the way it's been for the last fifteen years. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, it, it, and that that also is very important. We change in life. Change daily, <laughs> and um, I'm also very big about embracing what we have and finding a positive to things. Right. So when I stopped going into the office, I've now married and. And um, going into the office meant I had to drive anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half one way. And so suddenly I had three hours back uh, to a, any given day. So that was a positive. I quickly got able to, uh, I was able to embrace the working from home a little bit easier. For sure. And that, that is one thing, the only thing, what, how's the saying go? The only thing constant in life is change. <laughs> oh, man. And today's time tells us that. <laughs> For certain on that one. Um, so, last question: um, What what has been um, what you would consider maybe the most rewarding part of your career so far? That that really is easy for me to say. It's about the people that I've been able to impact in life, and be it my team members. You know, I treat people on my team as my equals. I can't do my job if they're not doing their job, so I they, they have as much of a contribution. I I really treat them like family and friends. Um, I have, with the work that I do with Women of AT&T and our other employee resource groups, um, I have a family of AT&T, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, and... I try to make myself available to them so that I can offer my experience and, and you know, ability whenever I can. Um, I think it's the people. It's the people, the students, you know, I can't tell you if I've mentored hundreds and hundreds of students and, and, and to see them as adults and giving back and being successful, I, I, I you know, I probably do more of the mentoring as needed rather than a life, lifelong, but I, I stay connected to everybody. So I really enjoy social media because it allows me to stay connected with so many. Um, and um, I think that's, that's what I enjoy. It's, it's the community of people that I've built around me. And that if today somebody called me and said, Lolly, I need help with this, I know I have a community of folks that I can call on to help as well. So I love working for AT&T because of the job that I have, yes, but because of being able to help back and give to a community and help inspire others to reach their fullest potential and to understand that, you know, life isn't perfect. Sometimes we zigzag. It's not a perfect up and down. Um, and no matter where we land, we, got, we can pick ourselves up. It's, it's, uh, it's very... Sorry. Uh, it's very important that, that we keep that in mind and that we have an understanding of how resilient we are. Absolutely. I think that is um, two big points out of there. It's like, one, the whole, you know, it's a zigzag. Yeah, there's no straight line to success for certain. Um, and two, having, you know, having a company that you're that you're a part of that organization and it being one where um, you feel fulfilled, you've got that team, everything, because you spend so many hours of your day at a job. So finding that organization that, um, that, that, like you said before, like it doesn't feel like going to work necessarily. You actually enjoy to get up and go to work and you actually like it. Um, that really is very important. And sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes you're lucky and you find it right away and other times it's a it's a trial and error um, kind of situation but for sure that's that's a big thing to look for um, when doing that so thank you so much for your time today Lolly I really appreciate it I know that the girls have gotten a lot out of this um, if you guys have got any questions look down uh, below the video there's the comment section be sure to leave your questions and comments there and Lolly can come back and respond to those so thank you so much ladies have a great day bye-bye Thank you and good luck to y'all.